Hi, this is Mr. Curtis, and today what we're going to do is continue our study on genetics. So this would be Genetics 201, which is like your second semester of genetics in college. So if you remember where we left off last time, we were talking about Mendel's problem with his P studies. So he had taken these children, which if you remember both produced yellow seeds, and he cross-pollinated them, and the children got yellow and green in their children's children. And the other thing that happened was this. Mendel was a really good mathematician, and he noticed that there was always a, this ratio of 75% yellow and 25% green. So he called it the 3 to 1 ratio. And no matter how many times he did this, he would count hundreds and hundreds of seeds, he always got this ratio. Well, after many years of study, he finally came up with this conclusion. He said that yellow seed characteristic is dominant to green seed. So if something is dominant, it covers up. It, it doesn't allow the other thing to show. So if we had a picture of a giant and then someone who was really tiny, behind them, the giant's shadow would cover up the tiny person. So in a sense, this is what's happening with yellow seed. Yellow seed is covering up the green seed. And he also said that for every trait that you carry, there are at least two alleles. Now that's another term for us to study here. And some traits have even more than just two alleles. So for example, eye color, which is something we'll talk about quite a bit. That's a multiple allele trait that you have, many, many alleles that you carry. An allele is a different variety of a gene. So there's yellow and green, that's two different alleles. And as I mentioned just a while ago, eye color, you may have over 12 different alleles for that. Now we're going to change the symbols that we use in genetics. So from now on, we're going to let capital letters represent the dominant allele. So in this case, capital Y will be the yellow seed dominant. Where the lowercase letter, that will be the recessive allele. So in this case, green seed. A couple more terms here. Purebred refers to two of the same alleles. Another term for purebred is something called homozygous, which we may or may not be using too much this year. Uh, purebred can also be lower to lowercase. So here we have little y, little y. Purebred can be big y, big y, or as I said, little y, little y. A hybrid is something with two different alleles together. Now we have heard a lot about hybrids in automobiles recently. So an, a hybrid auto has two different engines, electric and gas. Here you have two different alleles. That's what makes a hybrid. Another term for hybrid is heterozygous. Now let's try to figure out some harder things here. If we look at these letter combinations, what color will that produce? So if we have two big Ys, that'll produce all yellow. If we have two little Ys, what color will that produce? That'll produce only green. Now what if we have big Y and little Y? Now remember that big Y is dominant to little Y, so we're not going to get a mixture here. What in fact we're going to get is all yellow because the big Y covers up the little Y. Now we get to an even harder thing and that is predicting offspring, which is really the main thing that genetics tries to do. Figure out what offspring are going to look like. If you have two parents that are both carrying big Ys like this, well that's pretty obvious what you're going to have for offspring. They're all going to be yellow. All you have there is big Y, so everything's going to be like crossing two purebreds. Now if we cross these two, big Y, big Y, and little Y, little Y, you know that each kid is going to get at least a big Y from that one parent, which means that they're all going to be yellow. The kids will have at least one Y from one parent and one little Y from the other. So big Y, little Y, they'll all be yellow. If we look at this, big Y, little Y, and big Y, little Y, predicting this is not necessarily as easy as the other ones. 
So to help us, we have some tools in science that will tell us what the children will look like. We have something called a Punnett square, named for Dr. Punnett, and it's used to solve genetic problems. And they will also predict the outcome of the offspring. So the first step in using the Punnett square is to split the alleles of the parents. So taking a pen, you literally are just going to draw a line between the letters. That's step one. Step two of using the Punnett square is to place the alleles of the parents along the sides of the square. So what we're going to do is take one parent's letters and put them on this side, and the other parent's letters and put them over here. So it's going to be something like this. Big Y, little y, and big Y, and little y. Step three is to combine the letters like a multiplication chart. So what you're going to do is bring this big Y over here and this big Y down here. Then bring this big Y all the way across over here and this little Y down here. This big Y here, this little Y here, and then finally two little Y's right there. That's step three. Step four is to predict the offspring by answering two things. First of all, we want to answer the question of what is the phenotype? Phenotype is what the children will look like, like their physical appearance. Genotype is the second question we're going to answer, the letters of the children. So looking here at the phenotype, we want to try to figure out how many of each we have. We want to figure out how many are going to be yellow and how many are going to be green. Well, we know that anything that has a big Y is going to be yellow. So we have one, two, three that are going to be yellow. And we have two with two letters here that are little y, little y. So that's going to be green. So we're going to have three yellow and one green. That's a three to one ratio. Now we want to answer the genotype. What are the letter combinations? How many of the four are big Y, big Y? One. How many are big Y, little y? Two. And how many little y, little y's do we have? One. So our genotype ratio is one to two to one. Now let's try a new problem. Let's change what the alleles are going to stand for. Let big B represent the allele for brown eyes. Let little b represent the allele for blue eyes. So what I want you to do is I want you to cross a blue-eyed person with a brown-eyed person who had one parent with blue eyes. I want you to stop the video and first figure out what the letters for both parents are going to be. Then what I want you to do is to draw a Punnett square and then place the parents' letters in place like, we, like the, we did before, and then try to figure out what the genotype and phenotype ratios are going to be. Now this is not going to be easy, so you're going to have to go back and look at the video to figure out what's going on. I'm going to stop the video now, and then we'll continue in a second. Okay, we're back, and perhaps you are stuck so let's give you a couple clues here. Now the blue-eyed person, there's only one letter combination that will give you blue eyes. And that's two little b's. Now this brown-eyed person, you know that they have to get at least a big b because you have to have a big b to have brown eyes. But they had a blue-eyed person as one of their parents, so their second letter has to be a little b. So we know that they're carrying the letters big b, little b. So now, let's take a moment and fill in the letters here for the parents. So we know one parent is big B, little b, the other parent is little b, little b. So let's take this parent's letters and put them here, and this parent's letters and put them here. So we'll have big B, little b, and little b, little b. Now the next step is to 
bring them, bring them together. So we'll have big B here. This little B comes over here. Here, oop, I already have a little B there. And we'll bring this one down. Bring this big B all the way down here. And this little B across. And lastly in here, we'll have two little Bs. Now, next thing we want to try to answer is the genotype ratio and the phenotype ratio. So first of all, let's do phenotype. How many of these children are going to have blue eyes? Well, anything that has a big B, you know is going to have blue eyes. So that means we have one, two that are going to be blue eyes, or excuse me, if they have a big B, they're going to have brown eyes. Now, how many are going to have blue eyes? Well, you have to look at how many are two little b little b's. So we have two here that are little b little b's. So I know, so we know that we have two little b little b's. Phenotype ratio is two to two. What does that mean? That means we can expect half the children to have brown eyes and half the children to have blue eyes. That's what we expect. All right, let's look at genotype next. How many are going to have big B, little b? Well, I count two that are going to have that. How many are going to have little b, little b? There's two with that as well. So what does this tell us? It means that half are going to have big B, little b, and half will be carrying little b, little b. Now, I want you to do one more problem. Again, um, you're going to have to stop and work on this on your own rather than just watch the whole video. So here I want you to cross a big B, big B with a big B, little b. So hopefully you have stopped the video and now you are looking for the answer to how to do this. So we have one parent who's big B, big B, another parent who's big B, little b. So let's take this parent's letters and put them here and this parent's letters and put them here. Now we bring them together. Now we need to answer two questions. Phenotype ratio and genotype ratio. Okay, once again, phenotype means what they look like. So how many are going to have brown eyes? Well, anything that has a big B is going to have brown eyes. Well, let's see, this one does, this one does, this one does, this one does. Wow, they all have brown eyes. So four brown, no blue. That means that every kid here is going to have brown eyes. No matter what's going to happen, you're going to get kids with brown eyes. Genotype. Okay, let's look at the letter combinations. So how many are big B, big B? Well, I count one, two that are big B, big B. How many are big B, little b? One, two. So we have a two to two genotype ratio. That means half can be expected to be purebred and half will be hybrid. Now, we're going to be going through lots of problems like this in the future. We'll go through many in class and take some time and go back over and look at this again. So this ends our introduction to genetics. We'll see you next time.